Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Shirley with yakangler.com, and this is our first pro team interview, excuse me, pro interview with uh, Mr. Ty Sutherland. Ty runs 30milesout.com, kayak fishing charters. Uh, you can catch him on YouTube, Ty on the fly, one word. Uh, he runs two channels, 30milesout.com, which is the kayak fishing show, and Yak in Texas, which is everything else, reviews, how-tos, you name it. So uh, thanks for spending some time with us. Appreciate it, Ty. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we got some questions to ask you. So without further ado, I'm going to put you on presentation mode. So you're big screen, I'm little, and we'll get started. All right, so he's up. So first question, how did you get started in kayak fishing? Man, I've been fishing all my life. Uh, I fished out of everything that was possible to fish out of. And when I saw the first kayak go by me 15 years ago, I said, man, I got to try it. So, yeah. long journey, man. Long story. I appreciate it, man. I'm sure a lot of people got started that way. All right, uh, question number two. Uh, you've been doing this for a while, so what's the number one lesson you wish you had learned when you first started? When I first started in kayaks? Yeah. Number one lesson I wish I had learned. Teresa's yelling something at me across the room. <laughs> it's all kayak related. The number one lesson I wish I had learned. Uh, you know, probably up there would be to fish into the wind. I think a, a common mistake that a lot, a lot of people starting out make, and I made when I was just getting, in, getting into yaks years ago, is that I'd jump in the yak and I'd ride the wind. And then I would be really far from the truck, and I'd be exhausted, and I'd have to paddle into the wind to get home. Pretty much, I treat it like hunting now. I just I put my nose into the wind, and I go upwind all day, and then I just drift back home. As long as the wind don't change. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. I wish I would have uh, learned that one earlier, too. All right, so next question. Your best fishing tip to share with us? Best fishing tip. Uh, put your nose in the wind and go into the wind all day long, and then... <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, throw more top water. Yeah, yeah. Good one. Um, you drop me off naked in the jungle tomorrow, and I'm gonna I'm gonna carve a top water plug out of a stick. <laughs> yeah, man. Right, right on. So wind and top water. I got it. All right. What? What? Oh wait, Teresa's yelling at me across the room. She said, "Keep it simple." I'm always preaching less is more in a kayak. You know, so. The less you bring in the kayak, the more space you have to fight fish, the easier your day's going to go. We actually brought just two little boxes today with just a few lures in them and two rods each this morning. It was a beautiful experience because there was nothing on the yaks, just us and fishing. Makes for a great day. Yeah, okay. Appreciate it. All right, safety is a big thing, you know, for kayakers. So what is your more, most important safety tip for us? Uh, where boats are concerned, look, she's right. I can't talk and write. To... <laughs> she wrote PFD on a piece of paper, y'all. Okay, man, that's common sense. You, yeah. In Texas, the law is you either have to have it on or have it easily accessible. Uh, it varies from state to state, but uh, that's the way it is around here and for a lot of states. So PFD, you know, is a big deal. Having plenty of water on board, frozen bottles is the way I like to roll uh, they, they double as ice. Uh, they double as cold, cold water to drop your core temperature. Uh, they double as a way to keep fish fresh if they die on a stringer. Frozen bottles are amazing. Yeah, I learned that from you early on, and I definitely used it. So that's a great one. There you go, man. You've been fishing numerous places if uh, you watch your uh, YouTube channel. But what is your kayak fishing dream trip? Kayak fishing dream trip. Oh, man, like we're talking like crazy worldwide. You name it. You got unlimited budget. Where are you going? Man, somewhere crazy like Christmas Island or something. In the, you know, some, some little remote place in the South Pacific with just bleach white sand and, and flats and um, crazy species like giant trevally or something. Nice. Yeah. That'd be cool. So I don't want you to give anything away for like your next episode or anything, but what's your next planned big adventure? Uh, we've been filming real hard this fall. 
and uh, we've thrown some fly fishing stuff in the mix. I'm excited to get that out. Um, we we have a lot of stuff still to release from Florida. I'm excited to get out, and we've been filming around the Texas coastal bend, uh, a lot of top water again, and uh, excited to get that out. So, a lot of a lot of stuff coming up. Right on, man. I definitely loved your Florida series. I'm a, I'm a transplant to that uh, area near Navarre, so I look forward to seeing some more of that. What? Where are you headed? Destin, man. That's that's my spot. All right. Where are we at? All right. I know you're a fan of, you know, the, the inshore redfish, but what's your favorite target species and why? Man. Geez, these are some tough questions, brother. <laughs> tough questions. Because my favorite target species depends on the environment. So if I'm on the flats, I really, I really love redfish. Unless I'm on a flat where there's a bonefish, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love bonefish. Or unless I'm in the gulf, then I'm going to chase something fast. So um, it kind of depends on what, what world I'm in, really. You know, those are different universes to me. So give me a region, and I'll tell you for that region. All right, let's just take your home, Rockport area, Texas Coastal Bend. What are you fishing if you can only go after one? Inshore or offshore? You can only go after one. Which one's it going to be? Oh, oh, okay. Jeez. I guess if I can't go off the beach, it would be uh, reds. It's one of my favorite game species, redfish. Just because of the way their mouth is on the bottom and the way they have to come up to hit top or the way they – they're just really aggressive on the flats. I just, I just really love redfish. always have. Um, yeah. If we're talking off the beach, uh, Jack Revelle is one of my absolute favorite, favorite just because they're so violent and they strike so hard. Uh, anything that's willing to hit a topwater plug violently, I love. Yeah, out. Jacks will do that. But they're good fighters too. All right. Going down the list here. So situational question here. So you're stranded on an island, and I think I know what the answer is going to be. But you get one lure of choice. And you get one kayak to take with you. What are you taking? I'm stranded. Yeah. And I get one lure. Now, I'm, do I got to eat off of this lure or is it just for fun? I'm well, you're stranded on an island, so let's say you got to eat off of it. Oh, okay. I want something super tough. I want like a lead bucktail jig. Something very universal with a, with a super heavy hook. I was thinking top water for sure, but. No, no, I'm trying to. Stay alive here, brother. <laughs> top water, top water. Well, actually, I, I catch a lot of fish on top water, but um, I mean, you know, you got treble hooks, and if they snap off and stuff, um, I can take care of that here at the house. But when you're stranded on a tropical island, you can't get more hooks. So uh, a real stout single hook bucktail jig will feed us on that island for a good while. That's a good choice. Yeah, not not one I use too much, but I know that catches fish regardless where you're at. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nothing I use a lot either, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the next question, I think, you know, a lot of guys in the kayak fishing community would love to have the participation you get out of your spouse. So how were you able to get Teresa so involved in your passion? Well, there's there's a lot of bribery that goes on. Oh, please. <laughs> You know, I have I to was like born fishing. Uh, <laughs> Teresa Teresa was raised in the Corpus Christi area. All her family is down here on the coast of Bend and they all fish and they all hunt. And Teresa was raised on these beaches around here, surf casting, uh sharking, um uh, you know, Pompano. She was I mean, since she could walk, she was fishing these beaches and, and flats. So I didn't have to talk her into it. Uh, only thing I had to do was show her where the kayak was. She was already running around wading, uh, surf casting and all that stuff. So um, I just gave her own boat and waved by. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an awesome situation you got there, man. It's pretty cool. Well, we're blessed, man. I really, I really love uh, that we both are into the same thing. It's cool, you know. It really is cool. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So this is going pretty fast, but we're on our last question here. But uh, – Recently, uh, I think a lot of people have been noticing that you started up 30milesout.com uh, kayak fishing charters. So just a little curious how, you know, uh, a hobby is developed into a, you know, a business for you and your family. Well, I actually have that backwards. Uh, 30 miles out, 
Kayak Fishing TV has been my business for six years and full time for about three or four years. Okay. So um, I've been basically a TV show host, uh, YouTube host for six years and professionally for four years. And so I've made my living from 30 miles out. And I did not want to be a guide. People for about five years have been asking me, why don't you open a guide, sir? I'm not a guide. I'm a TV show host. I'm an artist. I'm, I, I like to entertain. I'm a songwriter. I'm a painter. I love singing and dancing, man. That's what I do. And that's what I do with this show. And uh, I wanted to stay there. And there's 200 guides on the Texas Coastal Bend. I love being unique. I love being different. I love being the guy with the kayak fishing show. So I refused to do it. Well, we started having people fly from Australia to fish with us just to meet us and fish. Another couple from Australia, a couple came from Oregon, a couple people coming in from all over the world just to meet us and fish with us and wonder why we don't have a guide service. So I said, I guess we're going to have to open a guide service, Teresa. <laughs> so it's actually an extension. Most people are guides and then they come up with this show, TV show after. I was reversed. I wanted to be a TV show host with no intention of guiding. And the guiding came along much, much later. Well, I'm sure some people are pretty uh, happy about that. So that's a. Uh, We've had an awesome guys. response from it, man. And it's really, I'm glad we finally did it because the, the fans come down, they get to meet us, they get to fish with us. I get to teach them all the stuff, you know, that they want to learn, like walking the dog. They get to catch their first fish on top water. And I can have the option to have cameras rolling. So I just get more content for the show. So it's a perfect marriage. That's a great thing. But hey, I really appreciate your time. You now it seems like this went really fast, but man, some amazing uh, content you got for yakangler.com. So I really appreciate it. Um, 30 milesout.com. What? Part of the what nation now? Yes, but, sir. Uh, yeah, check out Ty and Teresa at the website and then Ty on the fly on YouTube with his two channels. Hey, for yakangler.com, I'm Greg Sterley, and I thank you all for tuning in to our first pro interview with Ty Sutherland of 30milesout.com kayak fishing TV. For more great content, check out the website yakangler.com or subscribe to this channel.